stick with me and I'm gonna take you through how to grow mushrooms from logs. I caught up with my friend John Michelotti at uh, Pork Fest last year and I've had this video for a little bit but I saved it till now because it took a while to grow the mushrooms and test them and I've just been busy with other videos so I finally got it done and I wanted to share it with you. Now in this video I interviewed John and he gives you the basics on how to grow from logs and we also ask about um, how to grow from blocks which you know I've covered the block stuff before. Um, at the very end of this video, I will show you how the logs I bought actually did. The other thing I have at the very, very end of the video is kind of a surprise. Is I Even though we talk about this in the interview, um, I had a block of a fruiting block for shiitake that was spent. I had bloomed it twice and I had stuck it out in the garden and lo and behold, it started populating and, and grew again so that's a little bonus thing I threw on the end there. Hey my name is John McLaughlin of Catskill Fungi. Uh, today we're going to talk about mushroom logs so inoculating uh, fresh wood uh, generally sugar maple or oak with shiitake mushrooms mycelium and the mycelium is the root structure of fungi so that is the living body whereas the mushroom itself is just the fruit you can think of it like the fruit of an apple tree. The mushroom is just the fruit of the mycelium. And the mycelium is the living body alive 365 days a year. And so what we have is mycelium here that is grown out on sawdust. So we've taken sawdust and we grew out that root structure on it and that's why it's bound together so tightly and uh, white like this. And what we've done in the past is we have taken those logs like I said before and we have drilled holes in the logs um, in, a, in a diamond shaped pattern and then we took that mycelium that that sawdust root structure and we put it in those holes and we filled each hole with sawdust mycelium and then we sealed the holes with wax and over the course of a year that mycelium will now grow within that freshly cut log and um, permeate throughout the entire log. And when conditions are perfect, we're gonna soak this log, we're gonna bring it up, and it will fruit mushrooms. And here Let's is see. the beginning. Yeah, this this is kind of like the, this one's, a, this one's just about to pop out. This one's a little pin. This is kind of what you see first, and then it grows into a bigger mushroom, and then soon, you'll have big fat shiitake mushrooms growing out of your log. So um, this is a great way for farmers to supplement income too. You can do this on a commercial scale here in the Northeast. Um, now can someone buy a block, fruit it, and then when the block's done, take this and use it? Or is it once it's fruited, it's done? Once it's fruited, that mycelium has put its energy towards making mushrooms. And it's less vivacious, it's less um, hungry to keep spreading. Um, so generally what you like to do is buy fresh spawn that's specifically to different wood types because also your indoor fruiting blocks are more keen towards growing inside whereas you know you have spawn that you can buy that's specific towards logs. Okay so shiitake what kind of logs against sugar maples and and oaks. Yeah. Okay, so oyster would be... Oyster can also be sugar. Oaks are really great for that. Um, but, you know, there's a variety of other different types of woods, too. You can do mussel wood. You can do ironwood. There's hop horn bean. You know, there's a lot of different types of woods. And certain mushrooms grow better with certain types of woods. So um, if you're living in a place that doesn't necessarily have oaks and sugar maples, you can find out which mushroom grows well on the wood that you have. What can you expect uh, for a yield on logs and how often can you do it? Good question. So each one of these logs uh, will fruit. Now, now remember we drill the holes, we um, inoculate it, we wait a year, the mushrooms start appearing and they call that a flush when the mushrooms come out of the log. So you should get, after they flush, you harvest your mushrooms, then the log rests for six to seven weeks, then it will flush again. 
Um, you can usually get flushes from spring to fall and uh, maybe two or three a year for about four years, depending on your thickness of your log and everything. Now, can you use these logs to go on and, you know, uh, impregnate other logs? Inoculate another inoculate. log. Inoculate, that's what we're um, looking for. It's generally... Um, <laughs> impregnate, inoculate. Yeah. Um, not, not generally. I mean, what you could do after that log is spent would be to build a raft with it, lay it in the ground next to other hardwoods, cover it with mulch, and hope that that mycelium runs throughout that mulch and throughout those logs. So. Excellent. All right, and um, as far as starting them naturally, you, you want to soak them? Um, yeah, as far as fruiting naturally, you can either leave them outside in the rain and, and generally you want them in the shade. Um, the, the, the way that people, you know, log, the 90% chance of logs not working out is because they dry out. So you want them to stay in the shade, you want them to get rained on, you don't want heavy winds on them that can dry them out. And um, naturally they will volunteer mushrooms here and there. The other method is what you mentioned is called shocking or uh, soaking. And that means you're submerging that whole log within water for 12 to 24 hours. You may put a brick on it and you let it sit submerged in water. And then you take it out and you lean it up against something and that shocks the entire log into fruiting mushrooms. When you grow on the logs, how should you put them? Should they be on the ground or standing up like this or where do you... Talk me through yeah. how you actually use them. Great. So after I would inoculate my logs, I would either, and or you know, you can buy pre-inoculated logs. I would, if I only had a few, I'd lean them up in what they call something like this, like an A-frame. And I might even space them out a little bit more so that each mushroom has room to grow. Now the other way of doing it is something called a rick, and that is taking two logs this way, two logs that way, two logs, and you're building almost like a, a little log cabin style, but this ensures that you, know, you can still see through the rick, you can still harvest from different parts of it, and um, yeah, it's easily accessible. You would want your rick to be off, of, off the ground though. You so would these probably. should never be laid on the ground? Um, it's best to, to prop them against something. With shiitakes, I think it's best to prop them against something. Um, if I would do that um, rick stack, I would probably put it on a pallet or on two other boards that were cut. The reason why is because I wouldn't want other competitor fungi to get in there. Also, if they're sitting directly on the ground, they can mold out and, um, and really, and really you know, they're competing with mold. Yeah, they're competing with mold. They're competing with other things. It's and you know you don't want really mushrooms fruiting right out of the base and Got coming it. in contact with the soil and getting all dirty. So uh, uh -huh. yeah, but it's really attainable. This is really an easy way to grow. You can um, yeah you can. There's plenty of other free information out there that you can find out about. So. so if someone wanted to do this at home, could they have you ship them a block and then they cut it up before it goes to fruit and put it in? Or how do they do this? How do they yeah. get the fresh spores? Yeah, right now I don't have spawn listed on my website, but if anybody's interested in spawn, they can call me up and uh, or, or send me an email, john at catskillfungi.com, and I can find, uh, I can help them find spawn and things like that. Because you don't ship the logs, these are like local? Yeah, okay. yeah, this okay. is more like farmer's markets and things right. like that, so. But, right. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So we are in the very beginning of September, and my log finally bloomed. It took about, let's see, eight weeks. Eight weeks, um, you can get a good idea what they look like here coming out and even my second log now I did not soak these to make these go I just left them out and what happened is we had a really heavy rain I put them here under these sycamore trees and that's it so these guys are ready to go they do work I'm impressed with the logs and by not forcing them and just letting it happen naturally with the rain, it's supposed to make it last longer. That if you force the log, it doesn't have as many blooms. So there you go. I turn this around so you get a little better look. Um, 
I'll probably get about a half pound, maybe. I'm not sure. But it sure is neat to watch them grow. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting a few cycles out of these. As far as my wine caps go, I threw the blocks into this stuff. You'll see uh, I got some hardwood chips. And I took my uh, wine cap mushrooms and buried them in the chips. So I'm going to be watching for next year if anything grows. And then I just throw all the uh, yard scrap on it. So these are mushrooms grown from a log. And these are shiitakes. And you can see they came out really plump. Excellent. These are about three days old. I did not eat them the first day. Three or four now. Um, they're still looking great though. And that's just a little bit of a log harvest. And after you soak the logs, they grow pretty quick. Check it out, take two. So I threw this block of shiitake mushroom out after it finished. Stayed out here all winter and it was under some pine straw. And this has only been about a week uh, since the snow melted and I got mushrooms. I don't know how it survived, but it did. I'm gonna eat those things today. Awesome. Yeah, boy. Mushrooms. How about those mushrooms? It was really fun. I wish I could um, make a business out of this. Like if I was motivated enough to actually inoculate tons of logs and sell them at farmer's market, I think it would be a great business. Uh, also, I just love mushrooms. I, I would love to grow a bunch that I could just put like, you know, rack up like he's talking about and just have crazy amounts of uh, mushrooms throughout the year. Maybe one of these days universe if you're listening <laughs> i just love mushrooms so i'm going to continue doing stories on mushrooms because i find them fascinating and i hope you enjoyed this too also remember i'm in all these decentralized alternative sites especially library and uh, i'm over on steam it and d live as well any of those guys and you can check me out at my website above that's where i put a lot of footage that uh youtube doesn't like or uh, demonetizes you can get free access to that stuff so check that out one last thing is i'm still trying to wean myself off of youtube ad revenue so i'm trying to do a patreon model for as little as a dollar a month you can sponsor the show and help me get away from youtube I appreciate uh, all the Patreons I already have, and, and if you're brand new here, don't worry about it. Just keep watching any of these stories and enjoy more stories about mushrooms. Thanks so much.